Hogwarts Castle, a 5 inch gauge locomotive, part 30. Making the new front parts for the running boards. But before I start making the second of the running board extensions, I thought I would take this opportunity to remove the brake blocks and paint them. I've already done one side, so this is just a mirror image of something on a previous video. Once I removed the brake blocks, I put the bolts back in place so I didn't lose them. If you watched the previous episode, I painted these brake blocks originally using a brush. And when I thought about it, it wasn't really necessary to do it that way, I just wanted to show it in the video. So this time, I'm spraying the brake blocks on an upturned plastic tub using Phoenix Precision Paints Single Pack Grey Etch Primer. I've already made an extension plate for the other side, so it seemed like a good idea to use this as a pattern for this side. I turned it over and put it in place. Everything seemed okay, so I used this as a template to make the second one. I placed it on top of another piece of steel exactly the same size and drew round it. I used a Sharpie felt tip pen for this and now I have a very clear map of where I need to drill the hole and cut the slot. This is a situation where the calibrated eye, which I mentioned quite a lot, is very useful. Here, for instance, you can see it's not quite in the middle of the black spot. So I adjust it slightly and try again. Because a coned hole cutter of this type is very much like a center drill in as much as it's very rigid, you can move the position of the hole until you get it exactly where you need it to be. Fitted to my drilling machine is this really horrible, old, cheap and nasty cross vise, but it's been very useful over the years for preventing accidents and holding pieces of metal like this. Underneath a piece of metal is a mahogany block. This supports a piece of steel which is quite thin, and if I didn't use this, it would bend badly. By brushing away the chippings as I drill the hole through the black spot, I can see whether it's in the right position or not, and I'm making adjustments as I go. On the first running board extension, I didn't do it this way, I cut the slot first, but I thought, well, in case I have a problem, I'm going to drill the hole. And if the position of this hole ends up in the wrong place, at least I haven't had to cut and file the slot. This is a stepped hole cutter, and it's much easier to evaluate where the hole is relative to the black spot once you've drilled the hole a bit bigger. It's probably a good idea to use some lubricating oil when doing a job like this, but for the purposes of the video, I didn't bother. But now the hole's getting larger, I thought some lubricating oil would be a good idea. As I'm editing this video, though, I do notice that the sound hasn't changed from the previous sound without the oil. And there you saw the cutter stop. That's because I always have the belts on the drilling machine a bit on the slack side. So if anything goes wrong, at least it does that and doesn't snap the tool off. As the hole approaches the edge of what is now a black ring, it's much easier to see whether it's in the middle, and I'm still making very fine adjustments at this stage. I'm aware of other engineering methods to get a hole in the correct position, but these videos are designed for beginners, and this is a good exercise in how to make a hole in a piece of metal using a felt tip pen and a hole cutter. And once again, it's good for exercise in calibrating your eye. One more final adjustment, and bear in mind that I can only make these adjustments until I get to the final size. If I get to the final size and it's in the wrong place, then I would have to enlarge the hole if I needed to move it again. So the critical step is the positioning of the hole cutter on the step before the final one. And now it's exactly in the center, so I can carry on and go all the way through, removing any of the black felt tip pen mark. A final check before I go all the way through tells me that there's a minute adjustment required, a very minute adjustment. And having done that, it's time to go all the way through now. This drilling machine that I've used for quite a few years is a record drilling machine. And it's always been problematic. First of all, the handle broke. Then the motor capacitor packed up, so I have to start it by hand sometimes. But there's also some side play in the main bearing. For any real precision drilling, I use my milling machine, which is also a drilling machine. That is much more accurate by far. When I move to the new workshop and the money from my house sale comes through, I think I may buy a new drilling machine and some other new equipment. It will be very easy, very shortly, to buy a lot of new equipment, but I'm going to try not to do that. And I'm not being tight. I just think if I buy really flash expensive equipment, 
then this will not be the equipment found in most people's home workshops, especially the type of home workshop that a beginner would have. This part of the clip shows the final cut to finish the hole to the correct size. And once the last step has gone through the metal, I just touch the edge of it by putting a bit more pressure on to get to the next step's edge, which removes the burrs. And that's it, I can't see any of the felt tip pen marks, so the hole is in the right place. In the last episode, after cutting the slot with the bandsaw just like this, I used a milling cutter in the drilling vise, and I said at the time it was not a good idea to do it that way. This time I'm trimming it with the bandsaw, and I'm just going to file it to the right profile. A very simple job. The only problem is, when I try it in place, the piece of metal isn't long enough. So that's not good. So I've written wrong on the piece of metal, so I know that that's the wrong bit. Even though I cut the running boards together, one of them is slightly longer than the other. So this is take two. I'm not going to show you the process. It's identical to what you've just seen. I just repeated it. Now I have a running board extension for this side that is a perfect fit, just like the other side. I'm going to silver solder blocks on the front curve part to support the front of this running board extension. But currently I'm just marking the position of the piece of metal because it was a little bit too wide at this side. I made a felt tip pen mark at each end, then I drew a very fine felt tip pen line because I don't need to remove much of this, and then on the belt sander I remove the excess. And now just like the other side, this side fits perfectly. With the help of a couple of spring clamps and a piece of bar across the front, it's looking good. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.